Now, what is going on, guys? Today, we are going to talk about the same origin policy, what it is and what it means for the modern web. So before we start getting into the details, let's maybe first clarify what an origin is. So when we're talking about like origins, we're talking about URLs and two URLs are said to have the same origin if and only if their protocol, their host and the port is the same. OK, so in this case, both URLs would have different origins because here you have mydomain.com and here you have example.com, right? So the host is different. The protocol is the same, the port is the same, but the host is different. Now, if you if you make this mydomain.com, then it would be the same origin. And bear in mind that the path here doesn't uh, doesn't matter. So you can have anything in here as long as the host, the protocol and uh, the port is the same they are considered to have the same origin. And this is basically the main concept that we're talking about when we're talking about this policy. Yeah, so let's maybe talk about what kind of problem uh, this thing is trying to solve and then we will talk about how it attempts to do so. So if we look at the modern browser, uh, then you can do a few things. So for one, you can have multiple tabs, just like I have over here. Um, you can have multiple tabs with different origins, right? You might be on Dry.io, oh, maybe you're on Twitter at the moment, or you have like some documentation open. And what you definitely don't want is, you don't want some JavaScript uh, that runs on one website. So for example, here on Draw.io, to access like the DOM or another website that you might have opened in another tab. So say you're currently logged inside of your uh, online banking account, then you don't want like any website to be able to access uh, like your banking website, right? And this is basically the first use case. So you have like different tabs or different tabs where the origin is different and then you don't want like this cross origin access. Now, just as a side note, you can actually access document that is in a different tab as long as it's the same origin and you have a reference to it. So if you programmatically open a tab and it's the same origin, then you can actually access and manipulate the DOM. Just saying, uh, because otherwise it might sound as if this is totally impossible. No, it's not, but it's very restricted. OK, so this is like a first case. And what you or what's also important on the web is that there are a few items or artifacts that you have that you don't want to share. So say you have like a session cookie from website b.com, then you don't want like the draw.io website to access this cookie, right? Because this cookie might be critical, it might contain some important session information. Okay, so in principle, the same origin policy says, hey, if we have like different origins, then we need to be very careful with what scripts are allowed to do. And that is the next important part. The same origin policy, it's not about images, it's not about CSS uh, or about like anything else, it's just about scripts. So in other words, it governs what a script on one origin uh, is allowed to do. So let's make an example, okay? Let's say you have a website, say draw.io, and you have an iframe here. I don't know, maybe you, uh, this is some marketing widget, right? Where you can enter your email address and then you uh, can sign up for a newsletter. And this is by some other company or by some email marketing company. So the origin of this iframe, which is like a document or its own website in itself, is different than the one from draw.io. And what this means is, as we have learned before, if it's like different origins, then it, like the browser needs to be very careful with what it allows a script to do. So if you have a script over here, then obviously the origin of that script is the current URL, which is draw.io. And now if you access, if you try to access the content of this website here, which happens to be in the same document because it is embedded, then like you can't really do much. So it's not like you can do whatever you want with this iframe. So it's, it's not as restrictive in the way that it says you're not allowed to access it at all. You can't do, you cannot do much, right? And this is obviously on purpose because just imagine like this is some phishing website and this iframe is like your banking website, okay? And this is just a custom script. So in that case, if this script could access the website, then you would enter your username, your password. The script could just read it out and then, uh, yeah 
your credentials are on some are gone like some hacker stole your credentials cool so in that case it's clear that the origin of this script is like draw.io and what i also wanted to point out which might be like a little bit surprising maybe at first is let's imagine i pull this script in from another uh, from some cdn so say it's like stripe.com or so all right so i take this thing and i pull it from in from stripe.com then you might say ah oh, well but hold on a second like this script it's originally from stripe.com so its origin is stripe.com and that is actually not correct so the origin of a script or what determines the origin of the script is the document in which it lives in so even though this script might be pulled from a different website from a cdn its actual origin is the document in which it is located, which is at the moment draw.io. So that means the script that you pull in can do pretty much everything with your DOM, except like, as we said before, accessing this iframe, because that would be a cross origin uh, operation again, right? And that also makes sense. Just imagine if we were to consider this as a different origin, like this script here, how would we have like all these services that you have on the web, right? You have some service provider, you pull in the script and it does whatever you want it to do. So it makes sense that this is the same origin. Okay. Yeah, so that is in principle what the same origin policy is. There are a few other things. So for one, the same origin policy says that you are allowed to, in principle, allowed to write out requests. So that means if you load a script or if you have a script and it tries to access a different um, origin, it tries, you try to submit a form or you, uh, I don't know, you make a post request, for example, this is in principle possible. Uh, a few HTTP verbs are not possible. So put and uh, maybe patch, I'm not sure, but put, I'm pretty sure. So if you have one script that attempts to make a put request to another origin, and then this is problematic. And right now we're only talking about the same origin policy, right? So this is important because in the real world, this would obviously not work because apart from the same origin policy, you also have something like cores and that would most probably prevent you from doing something like that. So at the moment, what we're explaining here is really the pure uh, same origin policy. Yeah, so as we have seen like this uh, same origin policy, sometimes it's too strict, sometimes it's uh, not strict enough. And that's why, like in practice, it's just important to know that, okay, this thing, it governs what a script can do. And in principle, a script can do whatever it wants, as long as it does not access uh, things from, from cross origins. Uh, however, it can send out like requests to cross origins. It can embed things, um, but it cannot uh, read from like these other, from these documents what i also wanted to say is there's a lot of details in this kind of thing so i'm going to put a few links in the description down below which i found very useful overall i think it's i think it's not so important to know all the details of this what's more relevant like in practice is something like course which i'm going to do a video about as well and also how to implement that so just know okay same origin policy it governs what you can do with scripts and cross origin uh, uh, cross origin operations in principle here or reading content from this iframe and reading the DOM that's like a problem cool so that's it pretty much uh, thank you so much for watching leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you have a question let me know in the comments below you can also send me a tweet my twitter handle is at production coder but overall if you're not sure whether you should dig into that or not i would recommend that you rather look at course in, in case you're not like so familiar with it. So I'm going to do a video about that as well. Cool. So thank you so much and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.